All right, we really need to talk about Orkish Bowmaster here. Now don't take the thumbnail too harsh. I have to confess, it's a little bit of a clickbait thumbnail. So I recently made a card review video for Orkish Bowmaster. Link in the description below of the video if you wanna take a look at it. And I currently think it's an amazing card. I currently play it inside most of my decks that contain the color identity of black. However, it's gotten a little bit of an overhype. And currently people are saying that it's ban-worthy. And things like that. But the most important thing that I've noticed is ha how people play with the Orcish Bowmaster. They tutor for it. And they use the interaction with the Orcish Bowmaster in an... How should I word this in a good way? In EDH, you make political deals somehow to deal with another person, a collaboration of sorts. And I've seen collaborations with Orcish Bowmaster that don't favor the person with the Orcish Bowmaster. So this is not a video about Orcish Bowmaster is bad and you shouldn't play it, on the contrary. It's more of a video saying that it's an overhype and this is how you should not play with it. A tutorial of sorts, if I may say so. So something I've talked a lot about on this YouTube channel is stacks and control and how to operate and utilize those cards and also sometimes the problems. And actually, I want to emphasize that I often talk about the problems with those strategies and cards. I've actually made a video about why stacks is dead inside CDH. Highly recommend taking a look at it because that video will basically talk a lot about what this video is going to talk about. But in super short, if you're in a scenario where you're sitting with a control card in your hand, a counterspell, a force of will of any kind of sorts, and you have an opponent that is doing something you want to interact with, you can use your force of will to stop that whatever that thing is from that opponent. However, you and that opponent are trading 1v1 in card economy, while the other two players around the table are unaffected. They aren't consuming their resources. In other words, in 1v1, trading 1v1 card for card is perfectly fine because you and your opponent are trading equally, but in multiplayer, you're not. Stax has this problem too. I've seen a lot of comments where people say that Stax cards are destroying the game because you aren't interacting with everyone, you're kind of king making a tiny bit. And to some extent that is true and why I said in that video that Stax is currently dead. There is an angle where Orcish Bowmaster will actually do the exact same thing. Orcish Bowmaster will in the end only interact with a selective of things. It is very hard for it to interact with all of your opponents. Well, if all of your opponents are drawing an enormous amount of cards or if there's a Wheel of Fortune on the stack, then you do have that board wipe and you can interact with everyone a little bit here and there. But usually, your people are drawing a card here and there in a tiny micro version. And if people are drawing like one card extra per turn, you're only gaining one extra trigger, that won't board wipe all creatures, you're doing a very small impact, so to say. But decks that don't contain creatures, they get to roam free. This is the exact same problem with a stacks situation. Let's say you have an Archon of Femeria in play, and you're shutting down two of your opponents, but the third opponent don't really care one bit about the Archon of Femeria, and they get to operate however they choose. You're spending resources locking down two opponents, while the last opponent get to just continue producing using his resources to advancing his board state forward. Orcish Bowmaster can do that too. You just need to know about that. There is a very common simple situation. Let's say there is an Orcish Bowmaster in play, a Rustic Study or a Fish, doesn't really matter. One of the two blue card drawing enchantments Orcish Bowmaster can't get rid of. And then you have another opponent, a third one, that is in something you want to interact with. They're playing Adenos, they have a lot of creatures, there's a Tim in play, there's an Ayela in play, doesn't matter. You can interact with that person with your Orcish Bowmaster. Does this mean that you're not gonna pay for the fish? 
Does this mean you're not gonna pay for the rustic study tax? You could, but you choose not to, to gain Orcish Bowmaster triggers. This is a really bad trade-off. And going back to what I said earlier in the video, that in the multiplayer games you have a collaboration, a political situation, where you and another person are doing things together, or your cards are synergizing together towards a finalized outcome that is affecting another person, a third party in the situation. But in this trade where someone gets to draw cards for you to interact with someone is a bad trade-off. For example, someone could have a Tumna in play and then could tell you if I attack and connect to your face I get to draw cards and we can destroy that hermit druid over there. Now first and foremost this is a very good example because hermit druid needs to be killed. It's Orcish Bowmaster is actually really good at killing hermit druids. But you should bear in mind that in this situation we're giving a card to an opponent, another one of your opponent, in the end, even though you are collaborating a tiny bit, you are actually still opponent. So you shouldn't be super happy about this outcome deal, actually. But here is another thing that could actually also backfire for you. You see, if you have an Orcish Bowmaster in play, we have a known information of capable interaction. And if there is a Hermit Druid in play, or anything that we need to kill a Nayela, a combo creature of sorts then people could be sitting with their hidden information, their hidden interaction. That Tumna player could sit with a source of plowshare, but that Tumna player can still say, well, if you let me punch you in the face, I get to draw a card, and we can kill that Nayela or that Hermit Druid. Having known, revealed interactive interaction is a bad thing, because people will take advantage of you, Having hidden information is better because then they can't make that argument. In the end, Tumna wanna draw cards that is going to further that person's game plan. You don't really want that opponent to draw cards in general, so don't fuel that gameplay style. However, like I pointed out, Orcish Bowmaster can actually accidentally create that for you because it's revealed public information interaction that is capable of being used. This takes us to the next thing. You see, the main priority in all decks and all game plans and all mulligans too, whenever you're mulliganing, whenever you're sitting down at a table, that you, your focus is on one thing and preferably one thing only, and that is progressing your game plan. Whenever you're forced to divert away from your game plan, that means bad for you. It means that you're not going towards your victory as fast as humanly possible. If you're forced to interact, you're de deviating away from your core original game plan. If you're forced to survive, sacrifice your blockers for various reasons, then you're also deviating away from your core game plan. Orcish Bowmaster doesn't really progress any game plan whatsoever. Except for one commander, Obnixilis Kingping. This is actually a commander where I think you should tutor for Orcish Bowmaster. I would like to say this, everything I said in this video, every single word, does nothing of it applies to Obnixilis. Nothing. Orcish Bowmaster is a rustic study for Obnixilis. So if you're playing Obnixilis, ignore this entire video. But if you're not playing Obnixilis, tutoring for an Orcish Bowmaster is equal like tutoring. It's a little bit better than tutoring for a Force of Will. But it's like tutoring for an Arc, uh, Archon of Emeria, I would say. Or, t or tutoring for a Blood Moon. Or tutoring for a Back to Basic. That's not something you do. I don't recommend tutoring for Blood Moon and Back to Basics. And I don't recommend tutoring for Orcish Bowmaster either. Because if you're tutoring for an Orcish Bowmaster, you're sacrificing your core game plan, whatever game plan you're going towards, more or less. That tutor could be used to find one of your combo pieces or one of your actual value engines. Something that is going to give you more cards in your hand to find your combo. 
or just tutor for the combo itself. So why do we actually play Orcish Bowmaster? It is a skill card. It is a card that can be used throughout the game in various directions. The creation of token is also pretty good. You can use that token to sacrifice it for various tricks, or you can send that token into someone's face and start pressuring life total. That is good. You can pressure people's life total with a token so they have to deviate from their game plan and try to survive the token. If they are forced to use tutors to find blockers or ways to survive the token, then that's great. In the end, we are playing various cards that we don't actually want to play. Force of Will, no one really wants to play Force of Will, but you have to. This is a game of interaction. This is a free-for-all battle where you need to be able to interact with your opponents. Orcish Bowmaster, in my opinion, should be viewed similar to a Stax card like Blood Moon or Archon of Emeria and interaction counterspells like Force of Will. It's a card you kind of have to play and, it, and it's, it is a power creep question of what is better. In the end, Orcish Bowmaster is better than a lot of other cards with interactive capability. For example, I've talked about this before, we have Rest in Peace and we have Dolphy Voidwalker. Which one is better? The answer is Dolphy Voidwalker. So the one you should play, preferably before Rest in Peace, is Dolphy Voidwalker. The fa same thing applies to Orcish Bowmaster. It's just a question of, is there a card that is weaker than Orcish Bowmaster? Yeah there are a few, then those are the ones you're replacing for Ogre's Bowmaster. Ogre's Bowmaster is taking the interactive slot, not the gameplay slot and not the core strategy slot. Except for Obnixilis once again. This was a video with my opinions and my tips and tricks and my advice basically. But this stuff is important. A lot of players are actually making misplays in this. And in the end there's a lot of games where Orcish Bowmaster is just a card that helps another person win the game. Just like how Stax pieces accidentally can do that. And I hope this video prevents you or and helps you from accidentally doing that. In any case guys, hope you got inspired and learned something new. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.